Um, one of the things that you know I connected so closely the the little moment is the slice of life. Um, I didn't bring with me some you know like a rubric and a study that we did uh, as a whole sixth grade in our school. We had a great PLT in our school, um, and all these are from Josh Smith, our friends that he I dearly respect. He created lots of uh, sheets for us to think about the revision specifically because when we write, we free write, we know when we write the drafts. But the problem is with uh, our students that they don't they don't understand what what to revise. They will tell you, okay, I'm going to rewrite it neatly, and they think this is revision. So uh, we created um, what we call uh, different leads and different endings. And I have some um, a lot of them for all of you, you know, to, to look at. Uh, they will look at some perfect samples of endings and some great leads and then try to choose which one they feel most comfortable that the structure of their essay will fit. And then um, they will write on that on the line paper and it's gonna be kind of their um, their vision score. But then you give, you are giving them uh, a support as a teacher, you're giving them a way to how can I look at my paper in a different way and not just think about uh, using uh, is our or like the grammar mistakes as editing. They, they confuse I think with usually with uh, revision. And I did find a great jump in the scores in my team at least after using uh, this common assessment among all of us because I feel like you know they did look at that um, revision in a different way. They looked like you know okay here's a scenario that I can uh, see myself writing and uh, I can ask tell my teacher, you know, that I, I can do that. So two alternatives, and then they, they choose the best alternative after that, the best lead, the best ending, and then they write it as their final. They present it as their final. They did grow as writers a lot this year because of that. I do start with the rubric, though, like, you know, the backward design theme. I wanted to know how they're going to be graded, what are these things, and um, usually I focus my attention on the, f on the five. I don't want them to go to one. Um, so they know that the idea development is important. They have a plan of action. They do have a, a, a great focus. And then crafting is a, a big deal for me. All over the studies, if it is non-fiction or fiction, we, we continue grade them according to these things. So they know that it doesn't matter which genre I'm writing. I still need a plan. I still need to revise. I still need to um, use figurative language if it is appropriate or powerful words is not fiction. Um, this is something else that you know you can you can use maybe or tweak if you like. But we call size a lot because we can use our memorable moments and then put them into uh, this type of study. Um, Stephanie, uh, you know, introduced for us something more you know really enticing and great, and I loved it so much when I saw when I first came to Smithson Middle School. She did uh, with a slice of life. They did share their moments, um, and then we mapped our hearts, and we talked about everything that's very important to us and for us. And then at the end of the study of Slice of Life, when they did write their poems, describing themselves, um, or the, those moments that they share, and they choose what they wanted to put, definitely. And then we put them on a canvas. Um, they paint, spray paint the canvas first, and then um, all everything that's really describes who I am. It can be the six words memoir, it can be 10 descriptive words about me, who I am as a person. And it's a great way to um, end the year or take with them home. And I have plenty of examples of the kids they loved. And I'm, thank you so much, Steph, for this awesome project. I'm gonna do it coming in April because we're gonna start poetry and we, we already had Slice of Life study. And they can choose their piece that they wanted to share with parents. And it's a phenomenal success. Always parents are on conference time. They would just die to see what is the end of the product. So, where do you get the campus? The campus is usually it's a Michael or, um, you know, um, they're a pack of three or two. And then we ask volunteers, we ask people, we send a letter home. We tell the parents that without your help, will, this will never happen. So if you can donate and uh, paint and or you know things like that and then we can do it in class. I think it costs about two dollars or three dollars a piece. And if you have cute loans it will be even you know cheaper if it is a pack of three or something like that. Um, 
I guess I'm going to close up with uh, a joke that I'm translating from Arabic to English. Because this is Daddy's, you know, kind of thing. He said, you have to start your class with a joke. So, okay, Dad, I will. And, and Steph, he knows, she knows him very well. So, um, if you didn't understand the, the joke, just fake that you are, you're laughing. <laughs> if you did, just laugh at him. So, uh, we had uh, a teacher uh, there who is uh, preparing his class for a test. So, he's telling his class, hey, students, make sure that you know all your um, exam sheet will be clean and not, there's no money switches on them, okay? So everyone started testing and everything and using the answer sheet, except two. They didn't do anything. Nothing, okay? Um, until the end, when they left the class and they had everything, so one of the students, he asked his friend, those two that they didn't do anything. He said, so how did you do on the exam? He said, I did not do anything. I did not write a single word on this sheet. He said, no way! And then he slapped him. He said, what happened? He said, now the teacher who will think that, you know, I am a cheater too, because I did the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> so not always, it was also dumb because they didn't do anything that's clean, clean and did nothing, but also they thought they did cheat. Okay, good. <laughs> I'm glad I can do you got in that. So let's brainstorm a little some other things we could use in our content areas or in our grade levels or that besides the paper plate and the coffee filter that might be things that we could have kids write on that would get them thinking about French or social studies or science or, or might be good for littler kids or bigger kids or maybe we can just brainstorm some ideas. I actually have a plate activity. It's Patriot Plate. We do it every um, Patriot Day, September 11th. And we just, because for fourth graders, they've heard about it, they've seen it on the news, but they're not, they've got a lot of questions. And so it's kind of tricky to find that balance of getting enough information without scaring them. And so um, a lot of times I'll read Firebolt which is a fabulous story of the John J. Harvey, which is a retired fire boat that a group of friends um, had refurbished. And during 9-11, a lot of the water mains were broken in the crashing of the towers, and so they actually called in the fire, the John J. Harvey and some other retired fire boats that were there to fight the fire from the bay. And so it kind of gives the, the, a positive spin to it. And then we talk about how those people were heroes and what other kinds of heroes there are, everyday heroes, you know, big, exciting heroes. And then we just take a plate and we write about any type of you know hero that they want to, and then they just decorate the outside with red, white, and blue. It's real quick. It's like a one-day thing, but it's just kind of a nice remembrance in a safe way. And then we kind of put that as a display. And I always, I mean, the parents like to come in and see those types of things, you know, because mm -hmm. there's not enough art in elementary schools, I don't think anymore. And so if we can kind of get that into our classrooms along with our writing and our math, it's a win-win. Okay, talk to your neighbor about things they could write on besides these two things. I'd love to have a list of ten things by the time we were done. And then share out something you said or you heard, even if you think it's lame, because somebody else might be able to use it anyway. So I tell my kids, oftentimes the corniest ideas turn out to be the best ones. So, what do we think? Okay, you, go. you can write around a picture frame and then sit at home and the parents can put their school picture in it. Mm -hmm. and then I've seen little things like on Pinterest, like it was for weddings, but they would put their wedding song and then they would upload a picture and inform the picture. Like even if you could figure, like find a picture and then add your words to it and the words create the image. Mm -hmm. So that I don't know what app it is or what it, but it might be fun to use. And I'm sure if you search like weddings on Pinterest, you would find yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. But that might be fun. Others should figure it out last year. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Other suggestions? You can write on maps. We can use brown paper bags, try to write on it, and then crinkle it up, and so it looks a little tiny for like social studies stuff, like it's a write diaries from the past or a map. We can burn the edges to make it look like a map. Mm -hmm. 
respect your ecology and do something and why we need to protect the trees or whatever they would write about sort of recycling thing. Oh, it's just applies, but for my juniors, anytime I let them do something on their phones, absolutely, absolutely. When we were talking a little bit, and I'm in fourth, I teach fourth grade, so it's kind of a fine line with using social media. But you've seen those things like Facebook and Twitter and different things with that, but somehow integrating those within your classroom. Was, well, there was a teacher um, that that um, I, I work with that did. Um, he created a sheet that looked like instant messaging, and so he would like message them, and, and they didn't do it on their phones; they just did it on the sheet. But and he was just trying to figure out like a couple of little things that they were reading about, or something that was going on in their lives that was important. So he was just having these conversations with them, middle school, mm -hmm. um, sixth, seventh grade. So. Uh, the kids liked it, it, but it was one of many different tools that they could choose to, to work on. So we've, I've got a, we've been kind of brainstorming. I've got finger paint paper, litmus paper, although that seems really expensive and kind of small. Um, memo paper, or like phone message stuff. Uh, stationery, she suggested. I think it was like the longer legal pad. You know, if, when you're talking about court cases or, you know, kind of thing, that that's what lawyers use, I don't know. Um, we were flipping through here, like the, somebody was saying they use like the primary style paper with the picture at the top and the lines at the bottom to get kids mm -hmm. thinking about elementary memories for older kids. Um, the coffee filter picture frame I wrote down. Newsprint. If you were wanting to get them right, thinking about like a news story or to turn something they've read or been learning about into a news story, maybe that newsprint kind of feel. Well, Trina even mentioned during her lesson last month that you know, anytime she could give them something with like a picture on the edge or give them paper with lines alone, that that, that makes a difference. So it's, it's like, you know, you can bust your butt and come up with something super creative, but it you know, there's also the old standby, the paper with an interesting picture on it. Or, right. yeah. It's amazing that they won't write on a blank piece of paper, but if you put boxes or a order on it, they'll write on it. <laughs> Don't mm -hmm. know what the deal is, but we can find the border. Maybe part of it is that it doesn't seem as formal. Mm -hmm. That it's, I mean, it just seems fun. I don't know. You know, as I was thinking about this, um, and, and writing through these these things that I did, and I think it is probably with a lot of writing things that we do, but I wrote about things that normally I wouldn't write about. And so it, it created ideas for, you know, other pieces that I could that I could expand later that, that normally if I were just to sit down on a computer or sit down in my writer's notebook and write something, it wouldn't have been those topics. Mm -hmm. And they were good they were good topics to think about. I don't know about anybody else, but I can use a break. Mm -hmm. All right, so quarter after? Yeah. So we're? Okay.